Hey cruisers, welcome back to Vlogtoberfest. It is our last cocktail making night. This is our fourth week in a row and tonight we're going to be making something yummy. We're going to be making an apple cider margarita. And if it sounds weird, it's not. It's going to be delicious. Look at this unfiltered apple cider that I got. It's all nice and spicy and wonderful. So we're gonna mix that up. And then tonight we're also going to be answering your packing questions and any other cruise questions that we certainly can answer tonight. We'll be more than happy to try to do so. We're not playing a specific game or anything like that tonight. So it's just gonna be fun. Those of you who just joined, good to see you. We've got Sydney who just came in, Iron Wave, Brenda. Awesome. Brenda, yes, I saw that big announcement, but unfortunately, it's too far away for us to plan anything. And by that time, we'll probably be doing our own event. So we probably won't be on that one, but they were very kind to invite us. And thank you so much for bringing it up and for the love. We appreciate it. Hey, Rayleigh Creative Travel. Good to see you. Hi, Chris. Julie. What do you think, guys? Shall we make it apple cider margarita? Shall we see what this thing is all about? For those of you who need the recipe, let me pop it in the chat right now. I know it's a little late for you to prep, but at least this way you can kind of follow along. Hi, Brenda, you made it, yay! Hopefully you're able to make the um, cocktail with us tonight. Miguel's here, Darlene, Hope, Julie. Kathy, Brandy, so good, you guys. So yeah, this is a, this is a good turnout tonight. I'm feeling the love. Feeling the packing and cocktail vibes. Maybe we should pack while we drink cocktails. That would be a good video, wouldn't it? <laughs> all right, in all seriousness, you guys are like, okay, tame it down a notch there, young lady. Let's make an apple cider margarita. So the first ingredient we're gonna pop into a cocktail shaker with ice is three ounces of apple cider. I think this might be closer to two, but that's okay. We're gonna do that, I don't want it to be too sweet. Next, we're gonna put one and one half ounces of gold tequila in, and you guys, can you please just have a moment of appreciation for my cute little 1800 Reposado tequila with a little wood lid? I have it, I don't have tequila on hand, so I picked this up just for this cocktail at BevMo because I was getting a little spendy for my Vlogtoberfest cocktail, so I just was like, okay, I'm buying the, the $4 sample this time and not the whole bottle and I don't drink a huge amount of tequila. So let's put this in. It says that we're supposed to use one and a half ounces of gold, but you know, I mean, let's just use it all. Why not? If Jim Ring is in the house, I know I have full support. And then we're gonna pop one ounce of orange liqueur in. I'm using Cointreau. You can use triple sec or whatever else you want. You could even use Grand Marnier, by the way. Okay, there it goes in there. And then a half an ounce of fresh lime juice. I'm actually using lemon juice. It's just what I happen to have on hand, but I think that that's a-okay. And then we're gonna pop a sprinkle of cinnamon into the shaker. This is what makes it kind of fun and holiday-ish, right? You have to have a tiny bit of cinnamon. Those of you who don't like it, don't have to add it. And then we're gonna shake, but before I do that, I need to remember to rim my glass. So I've got, a nice little, this is actually kind of like a brandy glass and I'm going to um, put a little lemon around the edge and I'm gonna rim it with my cinnamon sugar that I prepared before, he, before we did this. So we're just gonna do that real quick. Cinnamon sugar looking ample and wonderful and noisy and that's okay. And there it is. And now we're going to shake while I say hello to everyone in the chat. Take a peek at who's here. Wow, we have a lot of people here, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. This is exciting. So good to see all of you guys. Haley, welcome. I hope your March Bahamas trip goes off without a hitch. I feel good about it. Maybe we'll hear this weekend what's going on in the cruise industry. Brandy, I love Patron as well. I don't tend, tend to keep it on hand, but I love it as well. Lisa always keeps tequila in her house. Diane is reminding all y'all to hit that like button. We've got 126 people in the house and already a solid 56 likes. You guys are doing great. John Michael, nice to see you. We're doing great, thank you. All right. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Miguel, go get yourself a drink. I don't wanna undershake, but I also don't wanna overshake. Okay, so here it is, it's all done. And you can, you can still, you know, use the ice. You don't have to necessarily strain this cocktail if you don't want to. I'm actually gonna put fresh ice in this glass and then I'm gonna strain it and see how it looks. And then if I need to add more ice, I'll do that. So here we go. Apple cider margarita, very holiday looking, so pretty. And I think we've got the perfect amount in the glass right now. And then we're gonna top it with an apple slice. 
So cute, and if you wanna to top it with a little extra cinnamon, you can. I'm gonna go pretty conservative with that because I don't wanna get it all over my teeth while I'm on camera, because you don't wanna see that, right? Right? Dorothy wants to know if I have a new toiletry bag. You like my old one. Ooh, I like that. We could do a new video on that. That's a fun idea, Dorothy. That video is ancient, isn't it? Let's do a deep dive, Dorothy, of what is in our toiletry bag 2020 edition. What an excellent idea. Wow, I, I never thought about that. Okay, here it is, guys. Cheers to all of you. Salud. And let's taste. I'm going to move a little bit of cinnamon sugar out of the way here. Mmm. That is delightful. And you guys know I don't like sweet drinks. It's wonderful. I would say I'm glad I put all of the tequila in. It definitely needs that punch of tequila because the apple cider is so sweet, but this is wonderful. Just like all the other cocktails that we have made this month for Vlogtoberfest, I do highly recommend this for the holidays. One thing that we mentioned on our website about this is that you can make a pitcher of this and serve it at a party. So you don't need to use a cocktail shaker. It's completely unnecessary. If you make the pitcher variety so easy, just pour tequila, lime juice, orange liqueur, and your apple cider into a large pitcher with ice and you can serve it in glasses that already have apple slices in them. I would say it's probably really good with a lemon wedge too. Just that acidity is probably great, but it's good you guys, it's really good. Mm. Canada said, just what I needed this gloomy day. So nice to make it on time. Glad you're here. All right. Iron Wave Studio says, this isn't about packing, but I'm wondering what you think about the wildlife that hasn't seen us this whole year. How are they faring? What about the stingrays who have been waiting to be fed? No kidding, Iron Wave Studios. My first thought was they're like, they're probably pretty happy. They're probably just like breeding and hanging out in Alaska and not worrying about us, right? But you know, you've got the stingrays who are probably a little sad because my goodness, Grand Cayman is completely closed off to tourism, right? Or is it just to cruise ships? Or is it tourism entirely? I'm not really sure. Great question. Maria Cepeda, welcome. We're doing great. Thank you so much. John Karzuski said, what are they saying about sailing out of California anytime in the near future? John, that's such a good question. They're not specifying anything about California per se, but what I will offer is that, um, I'll offer this. Princess Cruises still has cruises on their website out of Los Angeles starting on December 19th, so just four days after Princess stops their pause. So they haven't stopped selling cruises out of the West Coast, which makes me think they're holding out hope. My initial thought was that if anything's going to start up this year, it's only going to be in Florida. But I think it is very possible um, that there could be some cruises out of the West Coast. Of course, that it's very difficult to say because California is basically on, still on, you know, tiered lockdown. We're in this phased system where it's color coded and really most of the state is doing better and getting better. But our governor just released a, basically a Thanksgiving lockdown that said you had to wear masks with your own family and that you like could only take off a mask when you were eating with your family and you couldn't dine with more than three people. I mean, it's crazy how locked down California is. So I think we have that as an obstacle. I want to thank our friend Steve Roth, Steve and Shannon for the very generous super chat. Steve says, since we'll be out of town and won't make Saturday's live stream, it's actually Friday, but that's okay. Happy early birthday and happy Halloween, Sherry. Thank you for all you do. Thank you so much, Steve and Shannon. You guys are very special to us and I really appreciate the super chat. We are celebrating our final Vlogtoberfest um, vlog on Friday, so it's like pre-birthday. Saturday, taking Junior to an outdoor Halloween party, of course, no contact with anybody. It's all outside, don't worry, I know. Um, but we are doing something because, you know, he's a kid. Um, but anyway, thank you, Steve and Shannon. You are so precious. I really appreciate it. We're going to start answering some packing questions, some cruise questions. Um, I have a huge list of them already on my computer from the pre-chat, and I have a great list of questions from Instagram. So I have to remind myself to take a sip every now and then in between questions, but I think it's going to be a really exciting and busy night here in the chat. Melody Mills says, if only... If I only cruise from the USA, do I need a special plug-in outlets while on the ship to use chargers, et cetera? No, the, if you're cruising out of the USA and you're from the USA, Melody, you're gonna have USA outlet thingies on the ship 
in on the major U.S. cruise lines. Hope that helps you. John Michal says, what type of travel wall adapter do you guys use on your family trips? Wondering if there's one that you can recommend. It depends on whether you mean adapter to like say a European adapter or if you mean like a, um, like a power adapter, but we actually prefer to use the RAV Power Hub and you can find that John Michael in our store. Um, it's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cruise tips TV. Look for the um, camera gear section. When you click into the camera gear section, there are three um, RAV power hubs that you'll see right away in there and they're awesome. Basically they're charging stations with a multiple port and they're, they, you can plug anything USB into them. So they're wonderful and you don't have to worry about your limitations on your plugs. It's fantastic. So you want to do that. Um, Debbie Anderson said, wondering what is happening with the no sale order. Yeah, you and me both, Debbie. I was um, watching Matt over at Royal Caribbean blog on Periscope and he's like, yeah, remember last time they updated the no sale order at 11 o'clock at night or something like that. You guys, they're not going to update it until the end of the day on Halloween. Like, let's just get our heads around that. It is not coming early. I've lost all of my innocence in the last seven months. I no longer believe that the CDC is going to automatically tell us like Thursday at 10 a.m. what's going on. No, they're going to update their website and not make an announcement. And we're just going to, you're going to have to follow the cruise media and we're going to tell you when we hear about it. Follow cruise radio, follow Royal Caribbean blog. I'm sure they have alerts set and they're going to tell you. <clears throat> Holly said, we're, po we're cruising out of Galveston late January. Any news? Not yet, Holly. We're waiting for news. It should be coming by October 31st. Miguel said, how did you like my Cancun review? By the way, thank you for today's podcast. It was perfect for doing dishes and laundry. Miguel, I only got through the first little bit of it, but I was like, it made me want to go to Cancun so bad. I love the water down there. I need to finish reading it. Thank you for reminding me, but I'm glad you enjoyed today's pod. John Chambers said, packing question. Okay, John Chambers, we got you. Snorkel equipment. The fins and goggles are so awkward and huge. How do you fit them in your carry-on? Okay. All right, so if you're gonna take fins, snorkel, and a mask on a cruise, that's a really big commitment. I'm going to propose something for you to you, John, that is quite extreme because you know we're extreme minimalist packers at Cruise Tips TV, and this is my proposal to you. Only pack your snorkel. Rent the mask and rent the fins, or only pack your snorkel and mask and rent the fins. You will save an enormous amount of space by doing that, and the point that is going into your mouth is just the snorkel. That's my extreme answer. If not, just you're gonna have to just pack stuff around it and pack an extra suitcase. So I'm sorry, I don't have a more optimistic answer for you. Karen and Gord said, my question, what outfit would you pack to wear to the Crew Fight Club? You're so bad. Karen, I was a guest on Kabir, the cruise director Kabir's podcast, and he came onto my Instagram, guys. Um, if you wanna watch or listen to the interview, it is Keeping Afloat, it is a podcast. The podcast that we recorded, I would not recommend it for little ones, for kids, because we do talk about some um, funny cruise stories that are a little bit more adult in nature. So please don't listen to it with your children in the car. Um, it's nothing horrible, but I, I just want to tell you that it, it got a little bit adult for just a moment. Um, but yes, uh, <laughs> Karen was joking and she asked Kabir if there are crew fight clubs on cruise ships and he had it with a straight face. He's like, no, Karen, that's not a thing. And she was totally messing with him. But anyway, Ginger Pancake said my question, Carnival suggests luggage be unlocked when giving it to the porter. Wouldn't that make it be, wouldn't that make it easy to steal? Yeah, Ginger Pancake, it has to be unlocked because if they want to reserve the right to do an inspection. If you leave a lock on it and they want to do an inspection, your cruise, your bags may end up in the naughty room and you may have to go retrieve them and they may do a full inspection in front of you. I've never had an issue with theft with a bag going through security on a cruise. I don't think anyone here has, I've never heard of someone having a theft issue, but you're right, it's a consideration. Tiffany Gore said, will I still need to put my phone in airplane mode on an Alaskan cruise? Yes, you must, Tiffany, and here's why. When you leave the ports, so when you're in ports, you don't need it in, um, in airplane mode, but when you leave the ports and you're out to sea at night, you could end up in roaming territory and you don't want that. So put it in airplane mode every night when you get back on the ship and then take it out. Um, John Michael, I don't, you're, it's John, is it John Michael? Cause you're just writing it out. You're not putting the phonetic spelling, but I'm, I think you mean John Michael. And I'm sorry if I'm making it all French. 
I, I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> Jess Gordon said, can I bring a USB hub on most cruise ships, specifically cruise companies based in the US? Yes, I don't know any Jess that ban them. They do ban power uh, surge protectors or non-surge protectors. Power cords are banned. USB ports are not. Queet Beat said, what kind of inexpensive camera would you recommend for home videos? Your iPhone, the highest quality iPhone you can afford. Not joking. I would not recommend anything else. The way that the iPhones and the, honestly Android video now is incredible and it's all I use in my life. Mr. Cruise Hips TV, anything else on that? He uses his iPhone and he's a videographer. So I hope that helps Queet Beat. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to brush off your question, but I'm telling you what we use because I want to be truthful. Kelly Kervnick said, I bought a new carry-on and it's supposed to be nine inches wide, but it's 9.5. Do you think it'll pass TSA? Yeah, I think you're going to be okay, Kelly. Um, Tuco Girl Andrea said, packing question if you have time. When you pack toiletries, do you put them in baggies in your toiletry bag holder? Sometimes I do, Andrea. Sometimes I don't put the liquids into my um, e-bags packet flat. I put them separately in TSA approved, um, you know, waterproof ones inside of baggies. Great question. Gavin Primus is in the house. Hey, Gavin. Gavin says, I have a packing question. If you can pick one pair of packing cubes to buy from your shop, which ones would they be? It would be the e-bags medium set of packing cubes as your first starter. The reason I recommend a medium set for the first time, Gavin, is they're all one size. So I would go in there and I would look for e-bags mediums. Yeah, I would do that. And then later on, you can experiment and buy more cool other sizes and colors and stuff like that, or buy a supplemental set to, um, to complement it. Krista Lutz, let's see here. Mr. Cruise Sips TV, I'm ready for Krista's question. Sip break. Yay, I get to take a sip. All right, Krista, excellent question about beach towels. You do not need to bring your own beach towels on a cruise. The ship will supply them. You are welcome to take them off the ship. Just make sure that they come back with you or you might get charged. And what an excellent question, Krista. Thank you for that. All right. Ian Weiss said, what was the kitchenware you said you like to collect? Ian, my friend, it's Le Creuset Caribbean Blue. And I did put them in our store because when lockdown happened, I was like, I am going to put some of my kitchen essentials into a little shop just for fun. And I'm gonna copy and paste it into the chat right now. It'll just give you an idea for the color. You're gonna see a lot of Le Creuset Caribbean Blue items in here. And um, they're beautiful, I love them. I don't, I don't buy a whole lot of them every year because they are expensive. And I don't have a huge house. Like I don't have a lot of place, spaces to put things and we like to stay pretty minimalist, so yeah. JP Travel Adventure said, do you bring a EU adapter? We took an EU adapter when we went on MSC Maravilla. Do we need it in Europe, babe? I don't think we needed our EU. At the hotel in Rome, we needed our EU adapter, but on the ship we didn't. Eric said, what is your take on bed bugs? Eric, my take is they're horrible. I've never experienced them in 30 some odd cruises. Um, but, uh, they're horrible and I would learn how to detect them if you're concerned, but I've had only had one issue with them and it was in a condo that was rented from a person. It was, it was almost like more like an Airbnb. John Michael said, what is the word on Asia cruise ships? It's good. John Michael, they've just started cruising again or preparing to cruise in Asia out of Singapore, Singapore residents only. And I think Asia cruises are going to return, but in the, in the beginning, probably only for residents of the countries that, um, are there. Um, Dashy Games Rocks said, have you taken a Royal Caribbean cruise? Yes, we have. Dashy Games Rocks, go to our channel and search playlists and go to the Harmony of the Seas vlogs and have fun. You're gonna love that cruise. We go and we rip it up, tear it up, swim it up, slide it up at Half Moon Key. Perfect day, excuse me, perfect day at Coco Key, not Half Moon Key. I was on Hall in America vibe there for a moment. But yeah, go watch those vlogs. They're some of the most fun we've ever done. Maureen Ring said, you've recommended bringing only one pair of shoes for the evening to minimize luggage. What color do you suggest? Maureen, I love that question. A neutral tan, like either a fleshy or a brown sandal or a black sandal of some sort. It depends on your color palette of your clothing. If it was me, I'd probably go with a neutral or a nude shoe. 
All right, Christina V said, what store can I buy those pretty off the shoulder tops you wear? I love them all, thanks Christina. Um, I actually do get a lot of my clothes at a styling service called Fashion, and I have a very significant discount code for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a link and you can look into that right now. Um, you can request off the shoulder tops when you do your styling at Fashion, and you can even say, um, I want, I want off the shoulder tops like Sherry at Cruise Tips TV wears because I'm friends with them. And so they know what that means. And people do ask for Sherry boxes. So here's the link. You get $20 off your first box and your first box has no styling fee when you use my link. So what that means is that you don't have to pay for them to style you. Just be honest about your size and your preferences. Scott Kaler said, you talked about a jacket on your Alaska vlog this week. Can you get it on Amazon? Yes, Scott, you can. I also, what we did is we made a really nice article on our website, Scott. Um, it's about, it's all about Alaska packing tips. And I, I took links from several different stores um, and put them into that Alaska packing article. And I wanted to just let you know that I have a lot of jacket links for men and women. I have regular sizes, I have plus sizes, we have a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the chat, Scott, right now. And this one has a ton in it, guys. Alaska, here we go, I'm typing it out. Alaska packing with jackets links and several different retailers. I will also tell you guys, this is a great time to go to Costco and get your packable puffies and your rain gear for Alaska. And it's so inexpensive, so make sure you do that. Thank you, Rebecca Scott. Um, Laura E. McCarthy said, can you actually save more room with a packing cube? I roll my clues, clothes, isn't that about the same? Laura McCarthy, excellent question. Honestly, no. The point isn't necessarily to get more in your bags. The point is to keep it more organized. We don't actually want to see you putting more stuff in your suitcases when you use packing cubes. What we want you to have is ease of travel, ease of prepacking, ease of shifting around in suitcases. When you get off of the airplane, you get into your stateroom and you're unpacking, taking the packing cubes and just sliding them on a shelf. It's more about that than getting more into your suitcases. That's my opinion. Oh my gosh, Kathy Dunn has a podcast answer. There was a secret question on our podcast, Cruise Tips TV Unplugged this week, and Kathy Dunn got it right. It was from the movie Animal House. Spoiler for those of you who have not yet um, listened to the podcast. Holly said, we're looking at a yearly travel insurance plan as we're doing four cruises next. Your thoughts? Excellent idea, Holly. I definitely think you could do that. Um... I would look at the depth of coverage that you're getting and make sure that it's applicable in the countries you're visiting. Definitely a possibility. Also, call the travel insurance provider and tell them your plan. Say, this is honestly what I'm trying to do. Is this gonna work for my family in this situation, that situation? You know, you have to ask about that. Andrew Hill said, Panama out of Fort Lauderdale and Princess in March, gonna happen. I think it is, Andrew, I do. Debbie Anderson said, on your Alaska cruise packing list, what brand are your boots? They are um, Sperry Duck Boots. So Sperry is the brand, Duck Boots is the style. Dashy Games said, I'd love to go on Harmony of the Seas. Yeah, you should do it, it's great. Ange said, do you have to take the bottles for over-the-counter drugs to pass through TSA or cruise security? No, you do not, Ange. You do not have to do that. Now, some countries and some airlines you may, for cruises, no. You don't. I'm ready for Miguel's question. And we have a, lot, I have a lot of questions to go back to from earlier to Mr. Cruise Tips TV, so we'll do that. But this is a great conversation about packing. Oh, Miguel's gonna overpack just for the fun of it. John Michael said, you have almost 200 people watching. John Michael, that is awesome. We are so excited that this is such a busy night. I'm gonna go back, you guys, and I'm gonna answer some questions from earlier in the chat because I don't wanna forget about our friends. The first one is Lori Zorbrat. Packing, um, my packing challenge is not packing too early before a trip so I don't have too much time to keep stuffing more in the suitcase. Case. Amen, Lori. That is one of the problems with packing really early is that you keep putting things in the bag. Hard to be disciplined, but then, you have the opposite of that. Michelle Ann DeGroot said that she went through her Alaska packing list and took out half of the stuff. So it could go either way for you. You know what I'm saying? It could be either way. 
Um, Douglas Fami said, my greatest challenge is finding things that ordinarily are liquids in a solid form so I can travel all carry on, like solid sunblock, solid sunblock, solid shaving sheets instead of shaving cream. Douglas Fami, here's my recommendation. Don't worry about going solids. Go to a drugstore the day before or the morning you get on the cruise and just buy the travel size liquids you need. But I think you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself and that's what I would do. Super good idea. Camille Lindau said, my husband and I are going on a nine night European cruise. Should we try to pack everything we need in our e-bags, mother load, junior backpacks and carry on each? I would only do that, um, uh, Camille, I would only do that if you have the ones with the wheels. I want you to have something wheeled for your e-bags backpacks. If they don't have wheels, no, don't do that. Just go with wheels, unless your backpacking is part of your trip in addition to the cruise. Um, so yeah, great questions. I also had somebody ask me earlier, and this is a very good question. Um, what carry on we use on a cruise? And so I answered this question earlier in the chat, but I'm going to put it back in here and I'm going to show it to you. I actually, uh, ran into the closet and I picked this up because I actually leave it packed, but you want to know what carry on I use for a cruise and on an airplane. It's the Mia Tui mini gen or the Jenny bag. I've just linked to it at Mia Tui. The reason I like it is it has a sleeve for your um, handle on your carry on bag. The, the mini gen is quite petite. It's a bit of a tight fit for all my stuff, but as you can see, it has a lot of storage on the inside. And we actually, I literally leave it packed. I've got my TSA flight bags packed. I've got my pouch packed. This has a water bottle holder and all these beautiful pouches inside. So this is my go-to carry-on, guys. Um, I do use a backpack sometimes, but not all the time anymore. So um, thank you to whomever asked that question a little earlier. I, I think it was JP, but yeah. Okay, let's do this. Jamie said, do you pack as many dressy clothes for an Alaska cruise compared to a Caribbean cruise? No, Jamie, and what a wonderful question. Jamie, if you haven't seen our recent three-part series on packing for Alaska, um, we do mention that Alaska is more casual and it's cold. So you're gonna want like jeans and sweaters for dinners instead of maybe more dresses, um, in my personal opinion. So go more, like plan more to do like dressy sweaters and pants would be my recommendation. I was cold on my last cruise to Alaska and I would do it differently. John Chambers, question for Mr. Cruise Tips TV. How do you pack a vest for formal night with a ton of, without a ton of wrinklage? Fold it very carefully. How do yeah, you my, my trick is, I mean, it's, it's going to get wrinkled, but what I do is I fold it in a specific way so the wrinkles are really folds, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it's unavoidable. You're right. You're going to get some wrinkles, but I fold it very carefully. That's the short answer. Was your mic on? Yes. I didn't just do that. Drip the last few drops of tequila into my drink. <laughs> John, I hope that answered your question. Mr. Cruise Tips TV answering in the flesh. Ginger pancake, any tips for carry on only on a 15 day cruise and having room to bring back souvenirs? I'm already thinking about taking some clothes I don't mind throwing away. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it, ginger pancake. Um, one other thing that you can do is take an empty packing cube and very lightly pack your carry-on so that any souvenirs you buy can go in your carry-on, your backpack, your bag, leave room in that bag. Um, know that you're going to use up your toiletries, so those are going to be gone. But yeah, just leave a little extra space. There's no magic way to do it. If you want to go carry on on the way back, no magic way. Brenda said, I think you should do a how to minimize your travel supplies vid. Our bin is a little too much. Oh, Brenda, can you come to my house and help me, please? I'm not doing a good job, Brenda. I need to clean my closet. It's bad. I, I have avoided doing closet videos for you guys because guess what? I'm a failure. And I don't feel like I have been setting a good example during this time. I have been bad. I have not cleaned my travel closet. I don't want to look at it. It makes me sick. I want to have a garage sale and get rid of things. I'm like, I really have a problem with it. It's, I, I actually think I need to like a Marie Kondo consultation to like 
you know, get rid of stuff. But thank you, Brenda. I'm just, I'm being honest about how I feel. Bill Bayungo said, Panama Canal in January, what is a must pack? Bill, cotton breathable clothing. It is hot, it is steamy, you will be sweating. You will want to wash and change your clothes frequently because you will be hot, sweaty, and stinky. Take cotton clothing that breathes nicely. Number one tip. Angelique Archuleta said, which cruise line would you say offers the best entertainment? It depends on your tastes. I would say probably Royal Caribbean or Disney or Norwegian have the highest quality of entertainment. It depends on your taste. Alana is in the house. Hi, Alana. She said, hello, hello. Packing is a love-hate. Love because it means you're going on a trip, but hate it because it means laundry. That's right, Alana. I know. It's so funny. Ah. Paul Billis said, did you ever pack a calendar? Nope. I've never packed a calendar, Paul. Miguel Espinosa said, so, conclusion. <sighs> is a carry-on only Alaska cruise possible? Mr. Chris Soup's TV, is carry-on only to Alaska possible? He said, yeah, of course. I say, with sacrifices, Miguel, yes. Mr. Chris Soup's TV is like, it just doesn't bother him. He's not, it's not a fashion show to him. For me, I like, I like to have a variety, so it's going to be really hard for me. But yes, it's possible. Steve Roth said, packing tip. If you're cruising to a warm location in the winter and you live in a cold weather climate, put things in your suitcase when you're done wearing them for the season. I love that. Shailene and Kurt Klein are in the house. New mama and daddy are here. Oh my gosh, you guys, she's beautiful. I, oh, I'm following your stories obsessively. She's precious. Great job, both of you. Um, laptop to offload your fit footage or a portable storage option. That one's for you, sweetheart. Laptop, he's, he's done both, um, Kurt and Shailene. I don't, it's too much of a hassle. You don't do the laptop anymore. What do you do? Portable storage option. What do you offload it onto? Just portable hard drive. Portable hard drive, Kurt and Shailene. Um, we did try the whole ugh, laptop thing, and it was many times, and it was rough. Because he would come back from a port day, and then it would be like working. You know, he'd set up the computer, and it was like offload, offload. And then you're afraid to lose the laptop, and like, oh my god. So portable hard drive. John Michael, good night. Thank you for joining. Bridget's Buzz said, with the mini gen, could you fit a laptop in it? Oh, 100%. Bridget, let me show you. Um, you know, I'm trying to say, okay, so yeah, Bridget, this is the laptop uh, area right here for the mini gen. If you want to just take a look at it, I'll try to show you more deeply. Right there would be where you put your laptop. You could put it in the center. It depends on the size of your laptop. I could go grab my laptop. My laptop, this one, is big, it would have to go in the center. So I think I would recommend getting the full size Jenny and not getting the mini Jen. If you have a laptop that's about this size, this is, it's gonna eat up too much space. So size up to the Jen or look at their laptop options on the Mia Tui site and see if you like something better. Michelle said, I love my Mia Tui pack that I won two years ago during Vlogtoberfest. Michelle? Thank you for that, and thank you for giving me the perfect segue into telling you guys that Friday night, we are indeed doing a surprise giveaway, everybody. Um, you have to be present to win. Winners will be selected at random during the live stream, and um, we're going to be using a randomizer, so you have to be here when it's happening so we can pull the random stuff out. Fun travel gear. I've been saving travel gear up for six months for you guys for this moment. I didn't want to say anything before because I'm not going to advertise it to the world. I want to reward the people who are here and who have been here for the whole month of October. So come on over and we're going to give stuff away. It will be a global giveaway wherever you live in the world. I'm willing to pay the shipping. I'm willing to go fill out the customs form. I'm willing to do anything for you because you guys are amazing. So just show up Friday night if you can and participate in the giveaway. We'd love to have you. And if that doesn't work for you, we're gonna do a giveaway on Instagram soon, as soon as we reach 15,000 followers. So know that that's coming too. Um, Laura McCarthy said, where can we get the, the bag? Did I miss it? No problem, Laura. Let me get that for you. Um, here you go, Laura. I even tagged you in it, so you'll be able to see it, okay? Paul said, did you ever take a large suitcase for souvenirs? No, Paul. We almost never buy souvenirs. The biggest thing I've ever bought 
um, as a souvenir is a bottle of vanilla for a friend in Mexico. We buy very little. Um, I've never taken an extra bag, but you know, I mean, I understand that it's a, that's, you know, it's something that a lot of people like to do. Paloma said I could never travel with just carry on and that's okay, Paloma. Steve Roth said, along those lines, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, any opinions on garment bags for suits, etc." You used to do it when you would wear a jacket. Okay, so Steve, now he's like, ugh. He's like, did the eye roll, like, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. So when he would take a sport jacket, which typically now he wears more like a vest and tie and doesn't take a sport jacket, he just folds really carefully. But if we were going to do a garment bag and the times that we have, this is what we've done. We didn't buy a fancy one from the luggage store. We would take a high quality thick black bag that is given to you when you buy like a sport jacket. So you know when you go to Macy's or Banana Republic or wherever you buy your sport jacket and they give you a really thick bag that zips it's not a typical garment bag. It's not the kind you buy, but it's big enough. It's thick enough to use as like a, um, a carry-on. We would just take that and fling it over our shoulder and carry it separately if wrinkles were an issue. Um, or we would uh, very delicately fold it in half and place it as the top item inside of our luggage, not, being careful not to overpack that particular bag, and then folding the suitcase over the top of it. Um, Zara Magner said, Sherry, does Junior bring a suitcase and do you pack it or him? Great idea. Zara, Junior does take a suitcase. I do all of his packing. He could not care less about anything like that. So I do it all. And she said, what makeup and hair items do you bring? Oh, Zara, so many good things. I think we need to do another toiletry edition in November. I am going to make a note here that we've got a lot of interest. I'm actually going to See if I have a pen in my carry-on bag. I don't, I can't find my pen. But Zara, I could go on for hours. So what I want you to do is subscribe to our other channel, youtube.com forward slash cruise gear. We talk about a lot of different products over there. It's so much fun. But I'm gonna make videos for you about toiletries, guys, in November. I am so excited to do that and I would love to. Chris Dinuova said, do you need to pack a lot of fancy outfits for Oasis of the Seas? Chris, what a good question. If you're on a seven night cruise, there will be two formal night um, evenings. You don't have to dress formally, but if you want to wear a tie or a jacket, you could. Um, it's up to you. Otherwise, Royal Caribbean tends to be pretty casual. You can wear a t-shirt to dinner if you want. Um, it's really up to you. That's the beauty of cruising. These days, it's up to you. Michelle said, is the TSA pre-check worth getting if you're new to traveling? Michelle, TSA pre-check is good if you're doing a lot of travel within the US. Global entry is better if you're leaving the US and coming back in. And it's not all that much more expensive to get global entry. We did it, chances are if you have a high-end credit card, your global entry fee may be covered as part of your credit card. We did it with a Chase Sapphire Reserve. Highly recommend global entry, absolutely worth it. That one time when you walk out of customs and you breeze past a customs line to the global entry kiosk, that $100 becomes worth it. The interview is a pain in the butt. The application is a pain in the butt. It is a waiting game, but it lasts you for a few years, so I would do it. Lisa Vegas said, have you been on so many cruises by now that you don't buy souvenirs anymore? What was the best souvenir you ever bought? Okay, Lisa. We've never been big souvenir people. We just don't like to bring a lot of stuff home. So it's not so much that. But the coolest souvenirs we've ever gotten, I think are probably from Alaska, when we got handmade things. My son would tell you his favorite souvenir from Alaska is these crazy rock candies that he loves in Ketchikan. Right off the wharf, the dock, the pier, he gets these candies that look like golden rocks goes to the store, the ladies give him samples, and he comes home with a pound of rock candies, which I found out you can also get at a candy shop by the beach. But we're just not that big on it. Um, but local products would be my choice. Gypsy Soul said, remember my husband that made me ask you about Sharknado and Godzilla? How do I convince him to do an Alaska trip instead of a three-day Bahamas? Okay, totally Gypsy Soul, I do remember Sharknado and Godzilla, that's so funny. Feels like forever ago. How do you convince him? 
Show him our vlogs from Alaska. Let him decide for himself. But three-day Bahamas versus a seven-day Alaska, that's two different animals. Um, show him some experiences. Go to our channel. Go to playlists. Uh, Grand Princess, show him. Show him. Let him see. Um, Laura McCarthy, how much soda can you carry on to Royal Caribbean? I'm not sure right now, but probably a 12-pack per adult. Probably, but right now things may change. Jess Gordon, should I pack my own toiletries since I booked a grand suite for my December 2021 cruise on Mariner? Compared to um, JS and below, grand suites have upgraded toiletries. Okay, yeah, pack less, Jess, but in case you don't like their toiletries, you'll have shampoo, conditioner, and lotion in your grand suite. Um, but if you, I would pack for sure my own conditioner because hotel brands of conditioners aren't always the best, but pack less. Good question. Julie Redhead, did Mr. Cruise Tips TV wear a jacket when you were in the MSC Yacht Club? No, he didn't even pack one. Mm -mm. You, the Yacht Club is one of the most casual cruises we've ever been on. The formal nights were even more optional because there's people getting on the ship every day in Europe. They get on at every port. So, no, you don't have to. Brooke Shaw, aw, so good to see you, Brooke. Tina and Rick Spencer said, wrap the jacket in plastic from the dry cleaning store, little to no wrinkles, amen, and takes up no space. Diane Peacock, any suggestions for a large, lightweight, hard-sided, on-spinners luggage I will never go carry on? Yeah, Diane, you know what I would do? Go to TJ Maxx, Marshalls, or Ross, browse the aisles, look for high-quality brands, Samsonite, It Luggage, all those brands, or go to Costco and buy one of their beautiful sets. Costco carries beautiful luggage, and it's always very high quality. We have a Costco bag we have been using for literally years. Brooke Reed said, yes, do a toiletry makeup packing vid for cruising. There's not enough vids out there about this. Consider it done, Brooke. Do you want it on this channel, Brooke, or do you want it on cruise gear? Alana Zingano, another question from our friend Alana. She says, which do you... Which do you prefer for Alaska, one way or round trip back to the same port origin? Alana, I've never done a one way, but everyone I talk to in the industry who's done it, or everyone I've talked to who's done it for pleasure says that the, um, the one way, the northbound slash southbound instead of a round trip is superior, far superior to the round trips because you see more ports and you have more glacier time. I would probably do like a Holland America northbound, southbound with two glacier days. Kathy Barber said, nice to check in. It's been a while. Nice to see you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Yay. Queet Beat said, yes, I watched the Alaska vlogs, Forever Hooked. Amazing videos. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Paloma Duarte said, is South America on your bucket list? Absolutely yes, it is. It is so on our bucket list. Zara said, Sherry, what is your favorite restaurant on board a ship and what's the best meal on board? Ooh, one of my favorite restaurants on board a ship is Holland America's, excuse me, wow, I'm weird tonight with that. I've been getting all kinds of confusion. Um, Royal Caribbean, um, Wonderland. I think I need some sleep, you guys. Wonderland is fantastic for all ages. It is a feast for the senses. The food is not gross or weird. It's wonderful. You've got to try it. Um, in terms of just sheer delicious food, I like a good Carnival Cruise Line steakhouse. I also like Norwegian Cruise Line's um, uh, Moderno Churrascaria, the Brazilian steakhouse. So good. That's just a few. Um, MSC does a beautiful teppanyaki restaurant. So many good ones. Riano, 1974, thanks for the shower cap over the shoe tip. You are welcome. Jess Gordon said, on Mariner of the Seas compared to Junior Suite below. Oh, we already did that one from Jess. Good, good question, Jess. You guys, I am so encouraged by how many people are here tonight and how fast the chat has been moving. This is a good feeling. I have been feeling like everyone is sort of like, eh, about cruising right now and just that our channel has been kind of quiet. But this is just wonderful. Dorothy Rayner said, does Go Port pick up from any hotel near the port or do they have their own hotel? Dorothy, they use all outside hotels in the Orlando area and down by the port, like Cocoa Beach and things. So you've got a, a gazillion choices and you can actually go to their website and browse and choose your own hotel. You get to pick. 
it's exciting. Gavin said, I love the pizza on Princess and the Mexican restaurant and the steakhouse on NCL. Gavin, how could I have forgotten the Princess pizza? Yes, 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 so good. And the steakhouse on NCL is good. Annabelle, um, I've only had butcher's cut on MSC for um, brunch. I've never had it for dinner. Good question though. Mike and Cheryl made it. Mike and Cheryl are babysitting the grandbabies tonight. Hi guys, glad you're here. <clears throat> Quaxon said, Sherry, your mind is telling you to book a Holland America cruise. Quaxon, I have been looking at Holland America cruises. When their news release came out about their Alaska season, and I saw those cruises with two beautiful glacier days, I was like, I think I might need to look into that. That looks great. And I can tell you guys, if you like princess cruises, Holland America is a very comparable product. Um, and it's a, it's a really good choice, so yeah. Paul Billis said, do you bring or buy your fragrances? Great question, Paul. If you mean like perfume cologne, I pack my own. My favorite scent is Bobbi Brown Beach, and that's all I ever wear, and I actually pack a full-size bottle of it. I wonder if I have it in here. I don't, right? I don't think I have, oh, Paul, ha <laughs> ha! Paul, proof. I pack my own fragrances, buddy. And this, my friend, is TSA approved, my favorite scent. Lasts me forever, love it, smells like sunscreen, it's all I ever wear. So yeah, I just busted out my toiletry bag on air. <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I haven't traveled anywhere since June when I went to see my mama. Um, but yeah, anxious to travel again. Dave West is here. Dave said, hi, really love your live chats. Going on crystal end of next year, should I bring dress to your clothes or is the dress code just like royal? Um, you know what, Dave, let me check for you because this is my understanding about Crystal and the dress code, is that it is actually not super fancy, um, but that it's a little bit more of kind of an elevated experience. So let's see what the dress code is. Okay, let's take a peek. I'm gonna try to get some good, solid information here for you, my friend. Okay, here we go. Throughout the day, guests wear a mix of active resort wear, Waterside dining room attire is casual during the day. However, swimsuits, cover-ups, and robes are not permitted. After 6 p.m., casual daytime attire is not appropriate. Shorts and baseball caps are not permitted for men or women. Guests have two elegant options for preferred evening attire. Crystal casual and black tie optional. Please refer to the dress codes described in detail below. So you do actually need to dress up on Crystal, it appears. Crystal casual is an open collared shirt, a collared polo, button down shirt, dress shirt, no tie is required. And then the black tie um, attire, those are optional. So do you know what I would do? Honestly, I would wear the, I would pack the same clothes I pack on a regular cruise. Two formal nights, the rest of it is resort casual. Rianos, 1974 said, guys, burgers? Yeah, we should have mentioned that. Sorry, but that's my husband's fave. I love it too, but you know, I was the one doing the talking, so I didn't think about it. Rebecca Scott said, we are family. Thank you, Rebecca, indeed. Scott Kaler said, we learn a lot here and it's never a waste of time, just saying. Thank you so much. Chris Vest said, have you ever eaten at Gigi's on a carnival ship? Favorite dishes? I haven't, Chris, but I've heard it's wonderful. You guys, in the comments, tell Chris Vest your favorite Gigi's um, kitchen dishes. Aw, thank you so much. Brooke Shaw said, you all helped me conquer my Italian and Greek Isles cruise. That's awesome. Tuco Girl Andrea said, what glaciers does Holland America visit? Um, Hubbard and then the other ones, there's a choice. Let me tell you really quickly. I'm actually going to our website and looking at the news release right now because I want to make sure I give you the right information. I'm going to tell you which glaciers they visit. Now, it's going to depend, just so you know, on the cruise that you go on. But let's see if we can figure it out. Um, if you go on a round trip Seattle or Vancouver, the glacier days are different. But if you go on one of the um, northbound or southbound, you'll find that they have more options and it probably depends on the weather, but I think Hubbard is one of their main ones. I can't seem to find 
the article that I need that tells you exactly which um, glaciers that they're going to. I'm so sorry about that, but I do know that it's somewhere on our website. I'm gonna try one more thing because I'm stubborn and I really wanna know. Yeah, I can't seem to find it right here. Okay, we'll look it up later for you. Miguel Espinoza said, cruising might be suspended right now, but rest assured we're really thankful for the work you and your family do. May God bless you. You bring joy to many people who need a break. Miguel, thank you, and I cannot tell you how much we appreciate hearing that. We do need to hear that. It has been a very hard time for us. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Couldn't have made it through without a doubt, so thank you. Asha Campbell said, where did you get that nice bag from? Asha Campbell, this bag is beautiful. It is from a company called Mia Tui, and it is called the Mini Gen. So Asha, I'm gonna try to tag you in the comments here and let you know what it is. Um, the larger bag is called the Jenny, okay? So if you want something a little bit bigger than this one, you need to go Jenny. This is Mini Gen. Mini Gen still fits on the back, of your um, your rolling suitcase with the, with the little sleeve, but the Jenny is better if you have a little bit more stuff. I like them both. I've been using the Mini a lot more, but there are times when I wish I had my full-size Jenny with me. So you have to make that decision, but it's really, really great. Um, Queet Beat said, are crab legs sold as an upcharge on Princess Cruises to Alaska? They're actually included in the dining room some nights and then you could go to the Crab Shack restaurant that pops up other nights. So it's, it's the, sometimes they're included, sometimes you can buy them. Um, Mark G said, my wife wants to know where you get the sink suds. Hey, Mark G, um, tell your wife that we have them in our Amazon store and I will tell you how to find that. It's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cruise tips TV. And I'm trying to find which shop that they're in, Mark G so that we can get you hooked up, my friend. I think that they are in the stateroom essentials area and I'm gonna try to get you a link. Yeah, I found them for you, bud. They're eight bucks on Amazon. And Mark, I'm going to tag you in my post, okay? Um, and this is for your wife. Tell her they're in there. Yeah, Zara Magner said, Sherry, does Junior eat off the adult menu? Yes, Zara, typically he does now eat off the adult menu. On occasion, he'll order off the kids menu, but he's more, he eats off the adult menu at home too. When you look at him and he's got like chicken fingers and mac and cheese as an option, he's like, um, no, I'll take the steak or the chicken or whatever. He just not, he's never been a kid food kid. Bill Bayungo said, we love you, CTTV family. And Jim Ring said, what Bill said. You guys are precious, amazing. Zen Kakuji said, tonight's chat's gotten me excited to cruise again. I'll be checking out the cruise offerings tomorrow. Yes, us too. Sneakily put a deposit down on an Alaska cruise for next summer, but it means nothing. Because you guys know us, we change our minds all the time. But at least we have a deposit on something. It feels good, but I don't know what that means. You guys know how we are. So, all right guys, it's almost dinner time. This is crazy. 53 minutes has flown by and I'm really worried that I've missed some of your questions. Also, everybody who wrote questions on Instagram I'm going to answer your questions on Instagram tonight after dinner. So if I have missed you, I'm gonna answer them here on the gram. Lori, how do I decide how many shoes to bring along? It depends on if I'm going carry on only. If I'm going carry on only, I pack three shoes, flip flops, sneakers, and a pair for dinners. The dinner shoes have to go every night, even formal. So they're nice sandals, right? Like a wedge sandal. If I'm not going carry on only, I'll take four or five pairs and I'll just pack whatever the heck I want. That's the quick answer. Uh, Kathy said, it feels good to have a cruise in the hopper. Thank you. And thank you, Mike and Cheryl, so very much. Blair Fox, yes, I know, I know. Four cruises in 2021, that's amazing. You guys, I love your countdowns. Zara, we're having tacos for dinner and I'm really excited, can't wait. All right, you guys, this is hard for me to leave the live stream with 196 people in the chat. Um, but please know that we're gonna come back on Friday night for our last Vlogtoberfest live stream. Same place, same time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, right here. We will be having a giveaway. You must be present to win. You can live anywhere in the world. 
Marvin, we've never gone from California to Hawaii, but if Hawaii is welcoming tourists back, we might do a 15 night on Princess. That might be one of our first cruises out of the gate because now the idea of all those sea days, it sounds blissful. Mike and Cheryl will say, we told you so, but you're so welcome. Asha, you're welcome. Vicki, you're welcome. Mike and Cheryl, you're welcome. Riano, it is our pleasure. Thank you guys all so much. I cannot wait to see you Friday night. Until then, see you on the high seas. Cruiser all the week! <laughs>